good afternoon. We are headed out to Prineville to go get a Chevy Traverse. I don't know what year or color. Probably should ask that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it's broken and we need to tow it. So I guess these people ran over a pitchfork and it went up into the bottom of the transmission and the car got locked up into park and wouldn't move at all or roll in either direction. So uh, they had it towed to their house and I guess while they were trying to winch it up on the rollback, something broke and uh, popped free in the transmission and now it will roll forward if you push it, but not backwards and has no park or anything like that. So uh, perfect situation for the wheel lift and dollies since none of that matters. I just grab the front wheels, grab the back wheels, pick it straight up and off we go. So we're gonna go grab that and tow it back over to Redmond to a shop and then uh, see what other trouble we can get into. But first, we're getting fuel. See, been so long I almost forgot. Uh, this truck gets amazing fuel mileage and has a huge fuel tank, so fuel stops aren't nearly as common anymore. It's not that the red truck got bad mileage by any means. It actually got way better mileage than it should have for what it was, but it just had this tiny little fuel tank. I think it was a 19, 18, 19 gallon tank, something like that. So uh, with the big, huge stretches out here between fuel stops and me always doing long distance stuff, it just meant a whole lot of fuel stops. Okay, we are in Prineville town. I'm gonna do the Prineville U-turn. So a dump truck broke down in the middle of the street up there. If only there was a company that did heavy rescue. Anyway, off to the north we go. I think that might be it right there. Not 100% sure. Yes, that is it. Okay, not super keen on being on the camera, but got the dolly set out and ready. It's up on the curb right here, as you can see. So I'm gonna pull over here, back up to it, grab it from the back, dolly the front, and then uh, off we go. All right, we got it hooked up. We just gotta clear that pole as we come out of here. Oops, sorry, I'm too focused on what I'm doing. Okay, sorry about that. I actually had to like stop filming and pay attention to what I was doing so I didn't rip that front bumper off when it dropped off the curb like that. But I just lowered the back end down right right to the ground to help kick the front bumper up a little higher and then slowly eased off the curb with the dollies and it all worked out. So now we are going to hit the road and head back to Redmond. And I should be able to film unloading all that stuff on that end. So that'll be good. Wow just pulled into the body shop and this lot normally has like five cars in it it is slammed full so where am I gonna put this one this is nuts it's not even winter time yet dang all right well let's uh go for a walk around and see what we can do here Okay, it looks like my best bet. I'm over there, circle around here, pull back out the driveway and then kind of zigzag it back into this spot. So, I think that'll work. God dang, I've never seen this place like this. This is nuts. And the bad part is, doing all this to drop this thing off here just so it can get towed to another shop because there's no body damage only uh, transmission damage but since it's classified as an accident by the insurance company it comes to a body shop first so all this and these people aren't even going to touch it okay that's good enough we'll get it all untied get our new g7 dollies unloaded and thrown back in the truck and be good to go all right, let's do step by step on how to unload the dollies. And uh, I'm gonna do a whole video on how to load these things up and all that, but for now, we just undo our strap. I do a lasso strap type of deal, not the weird thing that Collins recommends. And then these are self-winding straps to just push the button, everything rolls back up. And undo your two safeties, 
undo the safety ratchets and you can just pull the handle. That simple. Okay, we got a fancy remote here so we can set this thing down and the back of the truck goes up a mile because I don't run air bags. This truck does have super springs on it though. So now we close the claws and the other one will go. And normally if you're in the truck, you just drive out and then suck it in. But since we're out here, we can just bring that back out from under the car. And then fold it up. Now on my other truck that didn't have this whole bed and all that here and this was cut off way up here at the back of the axle, uh, you had a ton of room in here to grab the dollies and just set right on the back of the truck because they set sideways right on the back but you know another couple feet farther forward. All the room in the world. This one it's really tight to get in here. You could get in here with the dollies but instead I just pull the truck forward a couple feet and then uh, then load them up. But just one little extra step of pulling forward but not a big deal. So here's the other thing about the new dollies. Is say you got to get them out from between two cars like this. Normally you, you pick them up and you try to shimmy like this and not hit them into the car or whatever. But now you can just take your dolly bar and you can stick in the pockets from the back side and just wheel them on out like that. Super simple. No hitting the cars on either side. And I don't use the correct dolly bar. This is like a flatbed truck trailer winch bar that I weld an extension on because the actual dolly breakover bar, I lost it at some point. I left it somewhere where it was not supposed to be left. So I use this. All right, just took all our pictures. I uh, got everything put away and closed up. So now I'll grab the keys, run them up inside, and we can get out of here. Okay, got the keys inside, got that one dropped off, went up, handed the guy the keys, so I brought you another one, and he looked at me and gave me this look where I didn't know if he wanted to strangle me or if he just wanted to cry. I know a lot of people have asked for uh, a video on how to set up and take down the dollies, and I've wanted to do that for a long time, but I couldn't because I'm using a prototype set of dollies. But now that that's all out in the open and they're not a secret anymore, I will get to that video soon and uh, you guys will get to see that if you're interested in it, and you can skip it if you're not, but. All right, I skipped a whole bunch of stuff, but we're back home, got the trailer hooked up. I'm gonna go get the Jeep, load it on the trailer and tie it down because it is supposed to rain here tomorrow down low, which is all snow in the hills, and I've got a full day of repair work scheduled for tomorrow, so I won't be able to do anything then, but should be a bunch of fresh snow in the hills then uh, a lot of people have this week off so chances of people getting stuck is pretty high and then uh, starting the day after Thanksgiving and then that whole weekend everybody goes up to get the Christmas trees and like last year that was just a slam busy weekend and then even aside from all of that I think Thanksgiving Day you don't get any calls between now and then to take this Jeep out Thanksgiving Day we're gonna go up as a family with this thing up into the snow and that'll probably be its first maiden voyage in the snow so you guys will get to come along for that either way uh, so I'm gonna get it loaded up now because long story short I don't really have another chance to do it unless it's while someone's waiting to get pulled out so now is the time all right let's go I measured correctly, this will fit. Ah, it sounded like I hit a fender. Maybe we should scoot over a little bit. Definitely hit the fender. This is really gonna suck if it doesn't fit. There we go. I get out and look. Oh, I can come over a couple inches over here. 
Oh, I'm right against the fender over there. Okay, I gotta come this way. Problem is, from my view right here, it looks like I'm hitting the fender. But I really got a couple inches to go, so I think if I rub the fender on this side, that's good. What is going on? What is going on? Dang it, I hooked it again. Okay, you know what I can do, if I was thinking, is I can come over here and I can undo the latch down there, open the fender up, drive up as close as I can to that fender and then don't have to worry about this high side hitting this fender. I mean, it's almost like I designed it to do that for just this reason or something. Okay, now we still gotta get as close as we can to this side. Like, rubbing it hard, or the back end ain't gonna fit. Call that good-ish. Okay, it didn't work at all because I mean, I got it up there, that worked just fine, but once I got it up there, I didn't have room to swing that back over to fold it, so I had to take it back off, fold that back closed, and then go up really carefully. You can see it's there, and there, you're like right on the fender on each side, but it's on the trailer, it fits-ish, good enough. You just gotta rub the side you can see and hope for the best on the other. So I'm gonna get it tied down and then uh, get the trailer unhooked again and parked back over here and it is ready to hook up and go when the call comes in okay so the jeep is on the trailer tied down it is ready to literally hook up and go to work so hopefully that happens soon i uh, came down back to the shop grabbed some air hose and tire gauge because i've got to do some tire work tomorrow even though it's supposed to rain so that'll be fun but uh anyway that is going to be it for look at how many birds are out there it's insane. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Uh, just a quick little towing and looking like an idiot trying to get the Jeep on the trailer, but it all worked out. So I'm going to go throw this in the truck and then head inside, get some dinner, and we'll see you guys next time.